So here is the garage band drum section. Uh, this is the live playing bit where you tap drums in uh, to create a beat. And that's what I'm going to show you now. And I'm also going to show you how you can mix them in a different way to the what's being produced here. So we've got some very high quality drum samples. They are unbelievably good. The cymbals have several different areas in which you can get, well, for example, closed, open, and the pedal hat that you would usually have after an open hi-hat. The crash cymbal here, by default, has the kick drum with it, which is quite smart. You can switch that off, though, if you want to play a uh, crash cymbal with no kick drum. Uh, so the kick drum doesn't activate the crash, it's only the other way around. And then we've got toms, which are really excellent. And we've also got ride cymbal. It actually sounds pretty realistic. It's got some quite nice build on it, like a real ride cymbal would. Now, this one's called Retro Rock. We've got things like Heavy, which is a much, much more uh, sort of uh, powerful drum kit. And by default, they come with these preset reverbs that you hear on all of the drum kits. Great. So, following on from that, four on the floor is nice as well. Now I'm going to use this one. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to play in a drum rhythm, a very basic 8-beat, and then I'm going to show you how you can program those drums afterwards to make them sound more realistic. So if I press the record button now, Okay, so there's my loop. Now, of course, there are a few things that I'd need to correct there. First of all, I'm going to adjust the timing by going to Track Settings and Quantization, and then I'm going to select 16th note, and there we go. There it is. So, playing these drums back now, I'm going to just open the Edit window. You can see that they all come up as sounds here. Now, that, those, t t those open hi-hats at the end, I'm going to actually take the second one and turn it into a closed hi-hat. Now, I'm going to put the bass drum there now. I'm going to take that crash cymbal away and that kick drum. I'm going to take that away as well, which means now we have a loop that we can cut. So I'm going to go in and do that first, bar five. Let's just select that, and I'm going to split that, there we go, and then get rid of the left-hand bit. Uh, delete, okay, there we go. Now, there was a snare drum there that wasn't very strong in level, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that one, I think it was one of these. Yes, it was that one. Very, very weak. Now, if you tap on that, you have four options. Cut, copy, delete, velocity. Velocity is what we need. The speed or the at which you hit the drum to make it sound quiet or loud. As you can hear, there are many, many options, which is also one thing that you can go through and tweak. Now, the way that a drummer usually plays a hi-hat is that the 8-beat here, you can see there are 8 hits of that hi-hat per bar, 1, 3, 5 and 7 will be strong, 2, 4, 6, 8 will be weaker because a drummer plays a hi-hat with a single action for 2 hits, so leaning in the shoulder of the stick on the hi-hat for the first one and then more the tip on the second one. So I'm going to select the second one, bring the velocity right down, and the fourth one. And the seventh. Sorry, eighth one. There we go. 
So now, if I just play that bar back, you'll hear the difference with that bar, but when the, when the cursor reaches this bar, it'll sound less realistic. You can hear the hi-hats are more common, uh, more constant there, whereas here they are not. They're more that you can you can hear the drummer leaning in to beats one, three, five, and seven of your hi hat of your eight beat pattern. So I'm just going to go on here. Some of them are a little bit now the hi open open hi hat is a little bit. Uh, different in that you want to accentuate that. So I'm just going to put this one here, this one just down a bit there, that one down a bit there, that one down a bit there, and now this will sound more real. Okay, let's take the metronome away for now, just to make sure that it doesn't sound sort of clicky with that sound in the background, it could be quite off-putting. Now the fifth hi-hat there was quite weak, uh, and we want the kick drum also to be louder. The way that drummer would play a kick drum is I, one of two ways, you'd have a soft and then a loud, or the other way round. So if we made that quiet and that one loud, and then this one quiet, So now we've got that, you now have your drum pattern with some vague form of realism. But the next thing to do is to work out how you're going to mix these, because at the moment there is no way of mixing these sounds together in level, as there would be on Logic Pro. When you're in GarageBand it just gives you the mix by default. Now, there are ways of doing this. If I click Done there to return to my main window, I can add three other drum tracks. In fact, I'm going to do this by saying duplicate on that track. It gives me another drum kit that's exactly the same. And I'm going to have two other kits here. So I'm going to leave the hi-hats in place on this track, and I'm going to paste the snare onto this track and the bass onto this track. So if I go edit on this, there we go, I'm going to draw a box. I'm just going to make it slightly smaller. I'm going to draw a box around all these snare drums. There we go. And I'm going to copy them, but at the same time, I'm also going to delete them. There we go. Now I click Done. Don't worry, your snare drums are still in the memory of the iPad. I'm also I'm going to edit the second drum kit now. Go to the beginning, and then click Paste. Now, all well and good so far, but it's put the snare on the first beat, and you don't want that, you want the snare on the second beat. There we go. So that restores the positions of those snare drums. Now you could put the cursor at the right place and click paste, and then it'll put them in the right place for you. So I'm now gonna do the same with the bass drum in the original track. So just close them down a bit, and just grab all the bass drums. There we are. I'm gonna copy those but at the same time, delete them. Sometimes you have to open the scale of the uh, editor up if your finger isn't quite selecting those drums. And then I'm gonna go edit. Now the bass drum came in at the beginning, so I don't need to paste this at the right place. But I'm gonna paste this anyway, and there we go. There are your, there's your kick drums. You now have full control over the kick, snare, and the hi-hat levels. And you can do other things as well, so I'll just show you this now. Now, way back in the old days, in the 1980s, there was a fashion for adding reverb to your snare drum, for example, but not the kick drum, because a kick drum reverb can make the sound very sort of muddy at the bottom end. So my snare drum is in the middle here. Now I could, at the same time, I could rename my track here. 
so that I've actually got snare. So you can rename your tracks, you can do anything you like. So I'm just going to rename that one as well. That's going to be hi-hats at the top. Um, hi-hats or just hats or whatever you want to call them. Uh, and then kick drum on the floor. Yeah, on the bottom. Uh, rename. There we go. So, kick. So if I go to my snare drum track now, I can go to my effects and add reverb on the snare only. I can now do things like adding plugins to my um, snare drum as well. If I click, uh, let's have a look, none. Vocal transformer is quite a nice one. You can make a real deep sounding snare drum with this. So if I just bring the pitch down, Doesn't sound that great, does it? Sounded rather an, an unpleasant noise. But you can take a, a snare drum that's been given to you, um, beautifully recorded, by the way, by all the people at um, the consultants at Apple or whoever they farmed this work out to, it's all very, very high quality. So your job is to try and make it lower quality. <laughs> so. So I've actually taken that vocal transformer off because yes, it is nasty. Now, the other thing you can do with this, um, you could take all these sounds and actually lo-fi them even further. But how are you going to do that? Sometimes I would like to put a snare drum, if I'm doing a reggae record, I like to put it through a guitar amp uh, with a spring reverb. But how are you going to do that on this? Well, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the snare drum only. I'm going to make an audio file out of this. So here's the snare only. There we go. So what I'm going to do first actually is to take the reverb off it and I'm actually going to take the, the compressor of it. So it is as you heard before. So with that, it means that you've got maximum flexibility when you bring it back in as an audio file. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So with the snare drum soloed, I'm going to go my songs to save that. There we go. Now I've already called this Snare February because I don't want to lose that snare drum file in my iPad and it's called Audio 305 or whatever it's called. So I'm going to go to Select and Snare February and share this as a song. And I'm going to share it to my files. Notice that I'd soloed the snare drum out. Now, snare February, garage band file transfer. This window comes up where you just add your file. Okay, so I've done that now. I'm going to go back into snare February and I'm going to click on this symbol here, which is a loop symbol and it's brought up snare February. Now I can bring that in as an audio file now. So if I just listen to that on its own, I have this. Now I can bring up a guitar amp track. Here we go. And bring up a nice manky horrible guitar amp to put my snare drum through. So I've got that track and I can drag the snare onto it like so. Now there are various effects that are on this on board this guitar as well. If I go to my pedals, I'm going to get rid of the phaser. There we go. And I'm going to go back to my main window and I'm going to play with the spring reverb on this amp. Um, amplifier. There we go. So if I bring the reverb, there we go. And there's your completely different snare drum sound. And you can go through with your kick drum and your hi-hat and make completely new drum sounds.